and welcome to the new course of introduction to MATLAB. In this video lecture, we are going to study about the basics of MATLAB. So first of all, we need to understand about MATLAB. MATLAB is a high level computing language. It is widely used in computational analysis, control, signal processing and communication field. Now what is the meaning of MATLAB? The meaning of MATLAB is matrix laboratory. MAT from matrix and lab from laboratory. And here we have one link that is matwork.com from where we can further study about MATLAB in detail. MATLAB can be used for toolbox for engineering, control, finance, image processing, machine learning, deep learning, data science, etc. There are tons of other applications where we are we can use MATLAB. We need some kind of course prerequisites that is like basic of linear algebra and calculus that is almost covered in the maths course in your engineering fields. Then after you have good to have some knowledge of computational or prior art background of some kind of programming language. So let's start with the layout of the MATLAB. This is how the MATLAB layout is going to look like. We have the MATLAB version of 2014. So here on the center we can see the command window. On the left hand side we can see the current folder where we can locate our directory or from where we can browse our program and over here we have a workspace. Now this is not the standard one we can also manipulate this layout by just clicking and dragging the workspace layout or current folder layout. If I want workspace layout on side by the command window I can just drag and push it over here. So it is on side of the command window or by chance you lose all your layouts then you can also bring all the layouts by just clicking over here layout and click on default so all the things are going to come together now here in the command window we are going to write any kind of code or any kind of system that we are going to run it or program it so right now just we are clicking some kind of calculations so if I am going to write a is equal to 5 and clicking enter it is going to display that a is equal to 5 then I am going to write b is equal to 3 clicking enter it is going to display the b is equal to 3 now one thing we need to notice over here here in workspace we are finding something new a value 5 b value 3 so the value we are putting over here that is called as a variable we are putting over here values that is going to stored inside of the workspace so now if I am going to write like C is equal to A plus B, what will be the answer? Exactly, it will be 8. So over here I can easily get C is equal to 8 and over here we can display it as a 8. Now there is a simple word CLC from which we can clear our command window. CLC. So we can clear our command window. But one thing we need to notice over here, the workspace doesn't clear. So if I am going to enter A and click enter, it is going to display the value of 5. So workspace is not going to forget anything. Okay. So right now we are clearing this. Okay. So basic data type, we need to understand some kind of array, matrix, data type, scalar, vector. So MATLAB is easily work with arrays, scalar, vectors and arrays. So MATLAB is going to be easily work with these all things and we need to assign some kind of variable we need to study about the different rows and columns vectors we need to study arrays and matrices we need to study how to uh, suppress our echo that is we are going to study in detail and uh, variables are case sensitive inside of the matlab whatever we are going to write is already case sensitive right so again in matlab command we are going to write something Suppose we need to create some kind of matrix, okay? So over here I am going to write A is equal to in bracket 1, 2, 5 and enter it is going to create a row matrix that is 1 by 3 row matrix, okay? Suppose I, I need a column matrix then what I need to do? Just write down B is equal to 1 semicolon 2 semicolon 5. So semicolon is going to convert this into the row. So as we can see B is going to be 3 by 1 matrix. Okay. Now what if we need 3 by 3 matrix we need to combine this space or we can say colon semicolon and space. 
uh, we have another function that is like c is equal to e y e in bracket 3 the e y e is okay e y e bracket 3 the e y e is indicating the identity matrix in which the number of columns and number of rows are going to be 3 so it is going to be look like this so it is going to be 3 by 3 matrix suppose i need to extend matrix or i can say extend the matrix c with matrix a or extend matrix b with matrix c something like that can we do this over here d is equal to in bracket a semicolon c so a semicolon c is defined by we need uh, we need our matrix a over here then after in semicolon it means in next column we need our matrix c so it is going to be look like this so a is 1 2 5 and from the second row this matrix c is going to be started right now what about i need to add the c inside of the a can we do this okay let's check e is equal to a comma over here we are writing comma not semicolon but comma c okay we are going error that called horse cat it means horizontal catalog is not satisfied the matrix are not that much size same size so we cannot enlarge this size so uh, we need to transpose this or we can say transpose this matrix so now check another possibility e is equal to b comma c can we do this okay as we can see over here 1 2 5 that is our b matrix that is our 3 by 1 matrix and over here our 3 by 3 matrix right so now what if uh, i need to transpose a matrix uh, let's clear it first of all c, c okay now we have our a matrix that is the row matrix 1 by 3 now we need to transpose this matrix can we convert it so if i am going to write a dash uh, it means it need to be convert into the transpose matrix okay right now as we can see the matrix is converted into the transpose matrix so now what about the multiplication and uh, can we do multiplication in matrix we need to check okay uh, let's take one another matrix f is equal to a transpose comma c okay let's check it before that we uh, if we write a c then we get an error so right now we are converting a into a transpose and now c so it is going to be something look like this okay without error we are go going to get this matrix 1 2 5 that is the transpose of a and then after our c matrix completely now what if we need to play with some kind of element of this matrix particular element let uh, let's see we need to work with this two number over here that is in second row and first column so we need to write one another thing that is f2 that is the second row and comma 1 that is the first column right so 2 comma 1 so we need to find out the answer is equal to ans is equal to 2 so we easily identify that second row first column the element is 2 now what if i need to find another element like uh, the one over here in the center one so we need to write what we need to write f in bracket this is second row right this is second row and third column so we need to write 2 comma 3 okay we get the answer 1 so uh, we are doing it correctly right now what if we need these two elements 0 and 1 then what we need to do okay let's try f in bracket this is second L, uh, second row so we need to write 2 and column that is second and third so we need to write like 2 2 3 2 column 3 so the, uh, we need to put the column in between these two okay so 2 2 3 enter okay we get the answer 0 to 2 so this uh, this is how we need to uh, we can get any element from the matrix we can change the element from the matrix as, as well as so we will discuss it about later but this is how we can play with the elements of the matrix now suppose uh, we are taking another variable p is equal to 3 okay p is equal to 3 and let's take q is equal to also 3 okay right now p and q 3 as we can see in workspace the value p and q both are stored in uh, 3 3 
right so now i am going to write f in bracket p comma q so what it it's going to be do what it's going to be do it's going to find the third column and th sorry third row and third column so it is zero over here so as we can click or enter we can see ans is equal to zero so it is also correct right so now if so i am putting the value of p is equal to in bracket 1 comma 2 okay p is equal to 1 comma 2 now we are going to play with f is equal to uh, now we are going to find from f p comma q what we are getting over here this is called 0 and 1 so over here 1 2 it means p the value of p is 1 and 2 that is first row and second row and what is the value of q that is 3 so the value of q is equal to 3 so it is going to find this 0 and 1 so our answer is 0 and 1 so we can find different different element from the matrix and this is called as a building of array and finding some kind of different array now we need to see about the column notation so let's take a uh, z is equal to one colon one colon five right so it is going to display the value of one to five right so this is called as a colon colon notation uh, what if i need to find out the same difference like z is equal to one colon three colon five so it is going to interval of one plus three that is four four plus three that is seven So seven is going to be exit from the five. So it is going to put the two items that is one and one plus three, that is four only. Same as we can also write z is equal to in bracket one colon ten colon hundred. So what it is going to be do? It is going to from one to one plus ten that is eleven, eleven plus ten that is twenty one, twenty one plus ten. And up to ninety one because ninety one plus ten is equal to one zero one. Okay, they, that is going to exceed the limit of hundred. Uh, can we reverse the matrix? Let's check. Okay, if I am going to write y is equal to y is equal to two colon one, is it possible or not? Okay, let's check it. Okay, it is going to create the empty matrix. So it uh, it is not reversible, but it is going to create an empty matrix. Empty matrix is called as a zero size matrix. We can also call as a zero size matrix or null matrix, right? Basic mathematical expression that we are going to use that is a uh, scalar operation. In scalar operation, plus minus multiplication, etc. Uh, logarithm. Then after exponential, power square root, sine, cos, tan, a sine, and all these things. Okay. Uh, there are some special variables inside of the MATLAB. If we are going to write pi, so it is going to indicate the number pi, that is 3.14, right? If we are going to indicate i, it is going to consider as an imaginary unit. Inf, it is going to find out the infinity, and an, it is not a number. Example, zero by zero. Okay, ans, that is the last display result, and that is the last element of array. Real max, that is the largest real value. and int max that is the largest integer so these are some special variable we are going to use in our matlab section right and then after we are also going to see when building our array we need to find out like ones m comma n it means that we are going to build m cross n matrix of ones okay if we are going to write zeros m cross n it means building m cross n matrix of zeros Same as well as e y e n that we already uh, write over the, in MATLAB like e y e three so it is going to create identity matrix of n so we are writing three so it is going to create a matrix of three okay diag vac so it is going to create diagonal matrix diag a it is diagonal element of a then after rand m n it it means Uniformly random number array, and the value of it is going to be in between zero and one. That is going to spread uniformly. Then after rand n m n, it means Gaussian random number array, and magic m it means magic uh, square matrix. Right. So after that, uh, we need to study about basic mathematical expression. So some of the expression we already study, like in scalar operation, we are going to use these all the exp uh, different different operations. and in matrix we are also going to use this all the operators 
like log m over here we are writing log only and over here log m because we are working working with matrix x m it means we uh, we are working with matrix same as well as m power m square root sum product so let's take example of this in set of our matlab operations so over here so right now we have our value of a okay value of a is uh, representing like this so if we are going to write some summation of a it is going to be represent 5 plus 2 plus 1 that is called 8 okay that's good and if we are going to write come sum that is commutative sum of a it is going to be represent like this 1 that is 1 plus 2 that is 3 1 plus 2 plus 5 that is 8 so it is going to be look like this so these two terms are not the same terms okay uh, now if we are going to change or same thing now same thing for the product also we can write product of a so product of a 1 into 2 it is equal to 2 into 5 is equal to 10 okay and same thing come prod of a it is going to be multiplication of 1 then after 1 into 2 2 2 into 5 10 okay so it, it is going to be look like this uh, now take now take one another example like a is equal to suppose 1 2 and 3 1 right okay now what about we are going to write a multiplied by a so what's going to be happen it is going to be a square the matrix of a it is the 2 by 2 matrix is going to multiply by 2 by 2 matrix so it is going to be look like this okay but if we are going to put a dot before the multiplication symbol and a it is going to multiply the same element with the same element so it is going to be look like this so over here 1 then after 3 into 3 9 over here 2 into 2 it is 4 and 1 into 1 1 so these two terms are very different from each other okay same thing we can apply to the different different matrix okay uh, right now we are not going with the division because it is a little bit of advanced level and it is going to be depend on either we are going to use our left division section or right division section okay we can conclude our lecture over here